Now you also served on the school board for 14 years, yeah. which I think is probably unheard of in, in this day and age of serving 14 years. How many times was the school threatened with a lawsuit? Oh, never. We never even visualized such a thing. Uh, to get on the school board at that time, I mean, you, you had to apply. They had to beg you to go. You couldn't get anybody to volunteer to help run the schools. Uh, so that's the reason I was on there so long. And uh, we had no problems. Uh, we went to the National School Board conventions. I went one year with Cliff Fleck to Atlantic City. I went one year with a man by the name of Sullivan from from Hillsboro, and that was to uh, San Francisco. I went one year with Claus Teston, and it was to Miami Beach, Arizona. And we actually studied. But when we came back, we hired a man, Ray Stanette, to run the schools, and we let him run the schools. And we had really no problems. You didn't have to consult lawyers or attorneys? No. So who else was on the school board with you at that time? Claus Teston and uh, this man Sullivan, I can't call his first name, and Cliff Leck, and uh, another man that had a grocery store over in the eastern side of the town, and I cannot remember his name either. I don't, I don't, uh, was Mr. Laura on there at the time? Yes, he Henry, might have been. Uh -huh. Henry Laura, he was from Array. Yeah, he, he yeah. could have been too. So basically Ms. the superintendent ran the schools? Yes, that's what we hired him for and we knew he knew a lot more about it than we did and we let him do his job. Well, do you think that today that uh, that system would be better to let the superintendent run the school or I definitely, I definitely do, yes. They're, they're, they are educated for it. And why would a, an ordinary mortal be able to do a better job? Very true. Uh, I have a list of people here. If, if you can remember them and just tell me a little something about them. Uh, the first one I had was Magnolia Ellis, and you told us about her. Uh, Dr. T.B. Williams. <laughs> Everybody knew about Doc Williams. He, he was kind of character. Uh, I guess he was a pretty good old country doctor, but I never went to him, so I, I really didn't know him personally. Uh, he lived in Williamsburg, Yes. but yet he was the mayor of, of uh, Hot Springs. How did that happen? <laughs> don't ask me. I don't know. <laughs> I was not in politics. Well, he had, he led quite a colorful life because yes. he was he was charged with killing somebody and oh, then oh yeah and yeah. then somebody killed him yeah so he was he was quite a he was a colorful person all right yeah. uh, Glenn Mims well I didn't know him personally either I I knew his some of his people but I didn't know him personally but. He was one of the higher ups in the community. Yeah, he was a mayor for a long time. Yeah. And he he was the father of Elephant Butte because he owned all that land out yeah. there by the by the lake. Uh, were there other many any other people that you wanted to talk about that you remember that were in town? I can't right off remember anyone else. Okay. Uh, are there anything special that you want to tell about the town that the people that uh, are just moved here or future generations might need to know about our little town? <laughs> I, I, I don't place myself in the category to give, give anybody a, any information like that. Uh, I just know that Everybody in town knew everybody else, and uh, when you met, you spoke, and we had we had no problems. 
I, I, I've often heard, uh, uh, well, what's his name, the lawyer lives on Riverside. Bueller. Bill Bueller say that when he came to town, uh, his wife applied to, happened to be to me, because I was on the school board, for a job teaching school because a lawyer couldn't make a living by himself. <laughs> and he didn't, almost went broke until another lawyer moved in here. <laughs> and after that, they both prospered. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Uh, and so I, I take it the crime rate wasn't <laughs> very much here. No, the crime rate was very low. What would be the worst crime that you knew would be committed? Oh, somebody might have stolen a little something from somebody else, something like that. We seldom had. Although, I, I, yeah, that brings one thing to mind. <clears throat> we had two people that had an argument out in front of uh, the the bar out yonder. Pine knot. Pine knot. The pine knot, and uh, <clears throat> they finally went outside. They both had guns. They shot each other. They both died. <laughs> I, I do remember that. I, I don't remember their names. Hart Derrish. Hart Derrish was one of them. What did? And Bonner. Oh. And Bonner yeah. was the other. So that caused a great deal of excitement. That caused a lot of excitement, yes. <laughs> uh, do you prefer the town as it is now? Or do you miss the old town? Frankly, I miss the old town. I, I like the slower life. We may not be able to find anything, but we don't have to drive for half day to find out whether it's here or not. <laughs> and I, I'm just one of those old timers that's been here too long. Well, I, I don't blame you. I agree with you. <laughs> Sherry, do you have any questions you'd like to ask him? No, I, not at all. It's been very interesting. Okay, one more thing. Uh, I know the Vietnam War was uh, was very painful to you. Could you tell us, if you can, why it? <coughs> yes, I can. My uh, uh, my son and my my adopted son, or uh, <coughs> what I'm trying to Step say, I married his mother, and. This boy was one of the brightest kids you ever saw in your life. He was a student at uh, the Tech in Las Cruz in uh, Socorro, and he was highly acclaimed by all his professors and all. And he he was drafted, and he knew it was coming, so he joined in in uh, the uh, Army Air Corps, and he flew one of the old Otters which was the oldest high-wing high monoplane that the Army had. And he and three, two other boys were in that plane, and they were coming back into Vietnam. They flew. When they left the ground, they spiraled up out of a small arms fire before they went any direction. And then when they came back in, they did the same thing, only they came straight down. and. <clears throat> They, they were all lost, and they never found anything of the three bodies, and that's the way it is today. And that whole war was not worth the loss of those three boys. No. And I think he's the only one that we lost yes. in Sierra County. And his name and picture are out there at the park now. In the, uh, and his park. name is on the wall. Uh, how many other children did you have? I only had the one, Luana, which who was your roommate in college, so you'd know as much about her as I would, and I was tremendously proud of her, her achievements, and she got to be a school teacher in Las Cruces, and that's where she died. But she died of a fast, a fast moving cancer. And I was in Mexico, and I didn't know anything about it until I returned because I, I had no address there. And she, how many children did she have? She, <clears throat> uh, my daughter had two daughters. And this, this one daughter, 
uh, Robin has a girl and a boy, and the other daughter, Melody, has three boys. And uh, at least two of them are married. One of them lives in, in uh, uh, I told you what I London. Ling England. And they have a, a child, which makes my great great. Makes you feel old? It makes me feel like we're <laughs> scattered all across the earth. <laughs> Anything that you, you? No, it's great. Great. Well, thank you, Scotty, for letting us do this. Now, see, this was painless. <laughs> <laughs>